morning. This is the Blaine's World webcast that can be found each week on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. We're also on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And if you want to find us, you'll be able to do so. In addition, look right behind me is the website, blainesworld.net, and you'll find information about shows there as well. I'm your host, Blaine Greenfield, and I'm here in my lovely downtown studio in Fairview, North Carolina. And each week we focus on positive news and information about cool stuff that's happening in Western North Carolina and throughout the country. And toward that end, it's my pleasure to introduce somebody I'll call Ms. Cool, or perhaps the coolest person in the area. And she is the uh, infamous Bobby Angel. And Bobby, you can wave to all your fans and friends who are watching this. Hi, I don't know that I'm that cool. Um... <laughs> too, too cool. Anyway, Bobby Angel, it, it's hard to describe her because among other things, she's a poet, writer, satirist, uh, here in the Asheville area. She was named Best of WNC Poet several times, uh, very active in the online community. She's also, um, just trying to think of all the things that you do. She's an actor, she's a um, an MC, you name it, Bobby does it. And she also, in her spare time, managed to write a children's book of poetry and illustrations, Raising Questions. That was perilous a few years ago. And um, she, in addition, at that time it was endorsed by um, David Lamott and singer-songwriter um, Roseanne K Cash. And Bobby, the question I have, and, and you'll answer, there it is. Okay, I love it. Okay, the I question I have, and, and you'll certainly answer this question, but you do all your, your stuff. Um, I take it you don't get much sleep. Is that a valid question? <laughs> I, yeah, I don't get much sleep. Um, uh, I Yeah, uh, this last year, uh, almost a year now. Um, yeah, I, I get very little sleep. Um, I actually, uh, it's nothing to do with my um, doing all of that, but I am filling that time of not sleeping with, you know, upcycling or drawing or writing or whatever. Um, uh, but if I, I do blame it a little bit, if I get a really good idea right before I'm going to sleep, which is of course, when I get the very best ideas, then I have to get up and um, and write that down or it'll go away forever. And that's well, very bad. The other thing I don't see when we're speaking, but I don't see your, your roller skates behind you because in terms of doing all these different things and getting it elsewhere, you you certainly get around, you know, uh, you name it, you'll <laughs> yeah. see Bobby Angel. And Bobby, I'm gonna give you a compliment, even though we've talked about this in the past, but Bobby Angel should also get credit and they should have a, a best of WNC comp competition for this as, what I'll call the best laughter in all West <laughs> North Carolina. And you're very, you're very subdued now, but uh, if you go to a show and you and I have talked about this, but I love your laughter at a show because what it does, it, it I think it, it inspires other people, you know, as opposed to just sitting back and, and not reacting. And I got to believe that at least actors, I would think would like it, you know, that you're kind of leading the way with your laughter. I, yeah, I, I, um, a lot of actors have told me that they get really excited when they are backstage and they hear me before a show <laughs> and they hear me laughing. And uh, um, I mean, they say that that makes them really excited because they know it's going to be an enthusiastic show. And um, also because I don't lie with my laughter. I, I'm not going to laugh if it's not funny. Um, uh, so, I mean, that's what they say. I know I also have a lot of people that don't like my laugh and say it's obnoxious or whatever. Um, so, but their loss, I love it. I, I mean, they, they tell me they like my laugh. So I, I'm, you know, about 75% of the time, I believe that. Um, <laughs> well, but I, I love it that some theaters actually was so cool. have even used it as part of their curtain speeches, you know, that they're starting to say that not just for you, but for other people, they want people to have a good time. They want people to become yeah. involved in this, which is really cool. And, um, and we saw that happen last year at Treasure Island at Montford, um, that um, when John Russell added um, that into the curtain speech, the audience changed completely. Um, they were far more into it. They were, they were far more vocally emotive in all the ways um, he later took it back out of the curtain speech. I'm not sure why, but then the audience changed back again. Um, but through those that week or two that they, uh, um, I think it was like two weekends that they had it in the curtain speech, um, it, the, 
actors in the show all commented on what a huge difference it was. I mean, I get people coming up to me and, and being really nasty to me about my laugh, you know, other audience members and that. But, um, you know, I, I expect it and uh, um, I have a lot of support from people and that, but it's the people that don't. It's the people that are going to a show with their friend or by themselves or whatever and someone yells at them about their laugh um, and they don't have, you know, they're not going to stand up for themselves or their friend's not going to stand up for them and then they don't come back to live theater, you know, um, and that's terrible. You know, there's, I, in talking about it on social media, I try and talk a lot about the things that people don't want to talk about and in talking about that on social media, I not only had a lot of people respond to me that they stopped going to theater because of it. They stopped going to see stand up because of it. Um, but um, then there were people that messaged me privately because they had been shamed so much publicly that they were too embarrassed to comment on my post. So they messaged me privately. And I think that's terrible. I think every theater should be saying, we want your laugh. We want your vocal emotions um, because otherwise they're not gonna, people aren't going to enjoy the show as fully, you know? And I've told you personally and privately, but now I'll tell you publicly, okay, <laughs> but, but count on me as um, being one who, who welcomes you and, you know, and, and love your, your laugh. Even to the extent, Bobby, you now know it. I now make it a point to sit next to you, you know? You do. <laughs> so no, no, I remember the very first time I wasn't prepared for you, you know, but now uh, wherever you're sitting, I want to be next to because I'm going to have a good time. Let's yeah. talk specifically about some of the things that you are doing now upcoming that people are going to have a good time at. And the one thing I'm really excited about, you just told me the other day, you have a gig coming up at Zoom. And talk a little yes. bit about that. Um, yes. Uh, so for 25 years now, I have been um, emceeing and performing at Benefits um, for, oh, gosh, everyone from Mana Food Bank and Helpmate and Our Voice to um, Planned Parenthood and individuals like the event we did for Kai Strange um, and the one I organized and emceed for Kenny Caps. Um, and so uh, I am in a place right now where I need to do a little sort of benefit for me. Um, and rather than, you know, just ask people for money, uh, I want to give them something uh, in return. And so they get me. Um, <laughs> And uh, um, Jim and Jen Lazan, who own Lazoom uh, tours, by the way, go go on a Lazoom tour sure. bus. Um, but they um, very generously and graciously um, donated the space, so I wouldn't have that overhead um, to do a show very there. Nice. Um, they donated sound and lights. I think Jimmy's actually going to bartend um, <laughs> for free. Um, they just are so sweet. Um, we'll talk about the event. When, when is it and where um, is it? And so, yeah, so it's going to be at the Zoom Room um, on Biltmore um, on Wednesday, March 27th. Um, and doors are at 7.30. And the show is starting at 8. Um, and it'll be a 90-minute show with a 15-minute intermission. So... It's going to be 75 minutes of me on stage. So if you don't like me, you don't want to come. Um, <laughs> well, uh, I'll be doing. Yeah, what, what will you be doing? Oh, yeah. I'll be doing um, a variety of poetry, um, rhyming and free verse and and uh, um, prose. And and um, I'll probably do some Princess Cortilda. Um, I will be doing some excerpts from uh, my autobiographical play, Death by Sparkle, and um, I'll be telling some stories, too, um, giving a little bit of background, uh, kind of a behind the music thing um, on some of the pieces that I wrote, why I wrote them, and that sort of thing. That but sounds we, like a lot for 75 minutes. <laughs> but wait, you mentioned something, and it's so sad we don't do it anymore. But I think one of the first, first things I, I started seeing you around town was when you did the, you were the MC for the Our Voice, uh, uh, Walk a Mile in Her Shoes, right? Oh, um, yeah, I was, uh, um, or, or the, I got the Spirit Award from right. that um, uh, in 2016. And then in 2017, I was the first female Grand Marshal. I remember. Um, for, uh, 
for the walk a mile for our voice. Yeah. It's such a shame that was, I thought it was such a great event. I'm so sorry they stopped doing it, but yeah, it kind of, um, it, it, it's a, it's a, um, a gender thing. Um, you know, uh, it, it did kind of transition a little bit, um, you know, uh, to not being in her shoes because right. intimate partner violence happens to all genders. Um, and and that but it, i mean it had been going on for a long time and so it just kind of changed with the times um until the point where um it then started to become it, it started to border on harmful um towards uh towards trans women and so um so yeah so they stopped it to you know not do that to not was, be harmful it was also a lot of work too and remember you and i a couple it of years it was a lot of work you, you and i were on the planning committee a couple of years and just a lot of effort yeah and but, i mean but so worth it i mean the it, you know the the turnout for that just what people would go through i mean you know uh greg garrison um from hop ice cream team hop ice cream um uh would be out there and like he got higher heels every year <laughs> like he pushed himself every year and it wasn't it, it, as as i'm not gonna say it exactly how he said it because i don't remember exactly how he said it but it it was because like i remember the first year he did it um that i that i was there um and um i brought him blister band-aids after to give him afterwards um and he declined um he's like no <clears throat> thank you and that but i need to feel the blisters like the whole point of this is for me to feel some pain to be reminded of you know intimate partner violence and that um sexual assaults and and all of these things that are so problematic and so prevalent and uh and so yeah so it was like he didn't want to feel better so i mean he raised up the heels every year because he wanted to keep pushing himself because he didn't want it to become something that was comfortable for him to, I mean, he ran a mile. I was going to say, yeah, every know, year. Every yeah, exactly. year. I, I, went uh, just, I went just the opposite extreme. I, I kept getting lower and lower heels, you know. <laughs> but what was interesting, to encourage other people to, to participate, I told them they didn't even have to wear heels. So some people yeah. started wearing it around the neck. They were carrying mm -hmm. it with it. but just supporting the effort. Let's go back to supporting Bobby Angel, or more important, talking about the the, sh the upcoming show. So yes. assume there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff. You mentioned poetry. Can you give an example of, of a type of poetry that people get to you hear? You want to read something? Yeah, would you? Yeah. I, I think it has one potty word in it. One, <laughs> one okay. square word in it. That's okay. Um, I'm sitting in my mind on someone else's time, and I'm posing for a snapshot of despair. I'm the girl of terror's dreams, and my smiles are all screams. I'm the poster child of all that gives you fear. I can heal subtle pains. I can grant the forest rains. I can offer you a shoulder or a laugh. But I cannot heal myself or give you any wealth. I'm only paid with love and never cash. And I'm in need of some small peace and some semblance of release so I can give it freely to the mass because the shadow of a doubt covers everyone without and no one has the chance to watch their ass. Satan's tailor calls me up when I am running low on luck and he says that he can fit me in at five. But I won't give in this time because my soul still fits me fine and I'm certain that it's not my time to die. Yet I don't know if I'm living amidst all that I'm giving. I don't know if I'll get back in the black. I can cry for you for hours, I can bring you gifts and flowers, but I cannot hold your world upon my back. Let me teach you how to be all the light and peace you see so you can carry on alone when I am gone. Let me give you every start. You need to cultivate your heart. Deep inside, you know that you are strong. And then you can be the teacher and rival Sunday preachers with the happiness you weave from bits of hope. And your mind will be at ease and stand firm against the breeze. And when you start to drown, you'll simply float. Never live inside the truth of an over tragic youth. Don't fight the world for problems in your past. Understand that you are you because of all that's done to you and only you can make your sorrows last. You see, your life is no one's mess, and I'm certain you can guess that the person you should look to is inside. And while I seem to know the answers, 
I'm just one of life's small dancers. And the only thing I know is that I try. But I missed it. I kept listening. So where was the one potty word? Oh, uh, no one has the chance to watch their ass. That's right. Well, I wouldn't say that's a real terrible I mean, I wouldn't word. do it at a kid's show. Okay. I'm more careful than that. Let me ask you, too. I've always admired you, uh, you Bobby, uh, in terms of writing poetry. Do you write poetry every day, or how do you write your poetry, or when do you write it? Um, I used to. I used to write all the time. I used to sit... Um, uh, um, Back when I lived in Illinois, I sat at the coffee house um, uh, and and just wrote for hours or Denny's or Perkins and just wrote for hours on end. Um, sometimes I still do that. I'll just um, get ideas and I just start writing and I just but um, I have um, I have CPTSD, complex post-traumatic stress disorder, um, and uh, makes it hard for me to sit still. Um, and it makes it hard for me to quiet my brain to do that. So, um, it's a lot more sporadic right now. Um, you know, I was working on some plays and then this all happened and, and, uh, um, so it's been hard to get back to writing the plays cause I need to be sitting and clearing my mind. Um, so I upcycling and, and, um, drawing and stuff have been more what I've been doing because it's moving my hands it's doing something <laughs> well let me ask about something else that'll be happening at the zoom show and that you mentioned i'll try to get the name of the right it's princess name Critilda. okay and for the benefit of the people who haven't met her or know who she is who is she princess Gratilda is a character <laughs> i created um for um the first sketch com no, actually yeah, the first sketch comedy show that Rodney Smith and I did um, at Magnetic Theater, um, and it was called Crimes and Misdemeanings, um, and I had written this piece uh, that we put in the show that we wrote with Jeff Cantonese uh, called The Kids Show, Definitely Not for Kids, <laughs> and, uh, and I had written this piece, and Candace Burchill actually um, performed it as kind of a um, very sweet kindergarten teacher um, but it was talking to kids about their down there place um and uh you know said things like don't stick crayons in it um and um and so it was very funny and uh um we decided to put it in the crimes and misdemeanings um <clears throat> but we didn't want to do it the same way uh and so i came up with this character um and I don't know why we called her, oh, yes, um, Morgan McDermott actually named her. Um, and do you know, are you familiar with Fractured Fairy Tales? Yeah, sure. You know, the old cartoon. Um, so I actually have the book. I love it. Um, so she's very much Fractured Fairy Tales. And so we decided she would be a fairy princess. Um, and Morgan gave me the name Princess Gratilda. Um, misremembering the character in Fractured Fairy Tales, who was Griselda. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, that's that's where we got the name. Um, and yeah, so she's she's this very easily flustered, um, inappropriate, often inappropriate um, uh, fairy princess who talks to kids about things that she really shouldn't be talking to kids about. Um, so uh, the second one was the importance of lying. Um, and uh, um, uh, the last one that I did was about trust, the one that I did at Attic Salt uh, for um, our last sketch comedy show that we did there. Um, so yeah, it just, it's hard to write for her. I did a few during the pandemic too. Um, so I'm gonna pull, pull out those pieces and maybe find ones that are that are fun. Um, I did one, uh, I I've, I've did Princess Gratilda at um, Kai Strange's um, right. uh, fundraiser that we did for him. Um, but other than that, Princess Gratilda has really only been on the sketch comedy shows. So unless people went to those, they've never seen her. Well, that's, um, I, I've had the pleasure of seeing her or meeting her several times. <laughs> and I'll put you on the spot too. I didn't warn you about this. Can you give me 30 seconds of, of her? 
and you just because I just love uh, you know love the spot it's not you know it's just I, I just love when you do her I don't have a wand where is my wand oh I have a <laughs> I have a flag okay that'll be, do it okay hi children my name is Princess Gratilda can you say Princess Gratilda <laughs> Princess Gratilda. I don't care. <laughs> I love this it. interview is all about me, <laughs> not about you. Yeah, so um, that, that's that's who we'll meet, though. But I'm, I'm telling you, whenever you do it, it just cracks me up. And yet, she and, has such a weird voice, too. I know, but that's what I love about it. You know, all of a sudden you come out and at the clear blue sky, and you mentioned the show. So I think I've seen most of those. And I just yeah. love it. It's kind of like a high spot of, of the show. And then nowhere this, this, this princess comes. Good, good stuff. So back to Lazoom then. We keep getting away from it. So they're going um, to see a whole bunch of different stuff at Lazoom. Yes. Um, and they're going to be pleasantly surprised. But if it's Bobby Angel, you're going to be surprised with it. And talk then, since we're talking about surprising people, I guess one of the other ways I met you or learned about you is when you talk, what's it called, upcycling? You do a lot of work in this field. And for the benefit of the folks who don't know what upcycling is, if you could describe it. Um, upcycling is um, taking something old and instead of recycling it where they turn it into the same thing again, you know, keep plastic, plastic, whatever, um, I, or it going into a landfill somewhere, um, you reimagine it uh, and make it something new. So um, you can upcycle furniture, you can upcycle, um, uh, you know, take um, old bike parts and turn them into a chandelier um you know uh all sorts of stuff i have um vintage fans that um my friend daniel martinez gave me um you know like the 1950s 1940s fans and i painted them so they look like flowers so they don't work anymore but they're just these very cool like metal sculptures kind of that are you know painted like flowers one has a little bumblebee on it um and so i upcycle clothing um and I started doing it in 2014. Um, I was asked to be the red carpet girl for Music Video Asheville. Um, they were moving to, to Wortham Arts Center and they wanted it to be um, this very big glamorous event. And they said, we want you to be on the red carpet in your weird outfits, um, but bigger, you know, like think Grammys, <laughs> you know? Um, and kind of set the tone for Music Video Asheville and where we wanted to go. Because it had been at the Carolina Theater or Cinemark or something like that theater before that. I can't remember. Uh, whichever one was over at the Biltmore Square Mall. Um, and uh, But yeah, Kelly Denson asked me to do that. And, um, and so I did. And uh, I went to Twice Round Vintage and got a dress from the 80s. And it was very long, but it had these very cool tiers of um, um, ruffles. And so I lifted them all up and sewed them all together. It's a very heavy dress um, and just kept adding to it. I liked it, but it didn't have sleeves. So I added sleeves and, you know, all of that. <clears throat> I put these little tiny keys all over it. Um, it's actually the same dress that I redid and wore to Music Video Asheville this year. Um, but yeah, so that started it. That started the upcycling. And and people, um, you know, I'm self-taught on sewing and that as with everything else. Um, but people really liked the upcycling. And so anytime I would do a big event, um, you know, they'd be like, and you're going to make a new outfit for this, right? <laughs> you know, so, you know, I made a new outfit that incorporated condoms for condom couture. And, <laughs> you know, um, Every year I had a new outfit for Music Video Asheville and, you know, just any big event that I was doing. If I was on stage with the Orange Peel, I was wearing a new dress. Um, but, yeah, people just got so excited about the way that I would reuse different things and stuff. So I started kind of posting the before and after, you know, these this shirt and these pants became this dress or whatever. Um, and... Uh, um, and then I did, I went to uh, Monford Park Players um, costume sale um, and uh, I guess like Halloween, not this past year, but the year before maybe, and got a, a really cool long wool coat from them and uh, 
found a dress, a little kid's dress at Goodwill for like two bucks that had these flowers on it on, in the material. And I cut out 96 flowers and I made this flowing, swooshing um, flowers flying along the, the coat. And people love that. And people started saying they would buy stuff like that. So, um, so now I'm trying to sell stuff like that. I've sold one coat so far. Yay. Okay. Sold within an hour. It was very, very exciting. I thought, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to make money <laughs> and my life will get better. And then nothing has sold since then. Um, <laughs> but I'll have, I'll have those at both the, um, the show at Lazoom and, uh, um, and the show at the Hoff. Um, but I, I, um, I'm working on other stuff too. That's not just coats, um, jackets and some vest things. And, um, yeah, so, uh, um, Elias Hamilton, who, you know, right. um, Eli, uh, he came over today to help me with my sewing machine and he got a sneak peek on the, on the things that I'm, I'm working on. And, uh, and he's 18 and he said they were very cool. And, and uh, actually, I think he said they were awesome. Um, and uh, uh, he loved my ideas, so. Well, and since you mentioned it, um, Bobby, uh, you talked about an upcoming show also at The Hop. And what's yes. that about and when it's gonna be and what's going to happen there? <laughs> um, so The Hop ice cream, um, uh conglomerate i don't know what they are there's so many hops now right, right. i'm so excited about how many hops there are um no the the hop ice cream empire has partnered with <laughs> um uh they, they'd be a good empire though they'd be like the really nice people. <laughs> um but they have partnered with malaprops and so um they are um uh, supporting each other's shows and such, um, working together for author events. Um, and so um, they're having some of the Malaprops author events at the Hop Ice Cream, as I understand it, um, as well. And so that's pretty cool, like lots of authors coming out for book signings and stuff like that. Um, so that's going to be really neat. Um, I'm the first author that's going to be at the Hop location. Um, it's going to be at the one on Merriman. Um, and, uh, um, it's a slightly delayed, um, anniversary of roasting questions, which is yes, backwards on the screen there, roasting okay. questions. Um, and, um, it's my children's book that I, that came out in early 2012. Um, and I did all of the artwork for it. Um, that's the Hop Ice Cream poem and artwork, which if you go to Hop Ice Cream on Merriman, you can see that poem and artwork hanging up there. It's been hanging up there since I gave it to them in 2011. <laughs> I've seen it. Well, back, um, to, the, back to the event. What's, but, the, yeah. what's the date and time on that um, again? That is Saturday, April 6th um, from 2 to 4 p.m. Um, Malaprops will be there with copies of the book to sell, and I will happily scribble on them. Um, uh, I, I sign a lot of books. Um, they're usually not mine. I just go into places <laughs> and, and that, but I'm happy to sign my book. Um, I'll have, uh, some upcycle stuff there. I'll have some artwork there, um, and, uh, some prints and stuff, um, uh, and we were talking, um, Greg Garrison and I are still kind of finalizing things, but, you know, if there's times that there's a crowd there, I'll, you know, you can't stop me from entertaining a crowd. People have tried, um, but, uh, you know, I'll do some poetry, children's poetry, no, no bad words. Now, um, that event you had mentioned, will there be other writers there that day? Just me. Oh, on that day, you were telling me there was another event that there are going to be other writers at. Um, I thought, okay, forget it. I, thought I don't I thought, know. I probably did. Okay. Anyway. Um, but, oh, so this, then they can just see you and meet you and they'll, you'll read some of your poems. All about me. Yep. And I will <laughs> happily, even if there's not a crowd there, if somebody wants me to read a poem again, you can't stop me. Um, <laughs> I, I will entertain people, um, especially kids. Um, and, uh, um, yeah, I'm always happy to, to do that. Um, I used to um, do a lot of children's shows at um, um, elementary and uh, Hall Fletcher and Artspace and 
used to do those every April. My whole April would be booked with with shows at, at the hop and with shows at schools and stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, after the pandemic, it just really hasn't gone back to that. But um, but yeah, I always love I always love doing that. Um, you know, I spent four, four years in a children's home with, you know, 300 kids. Um, and uh, um, I, one of my favorite jobs there was running the children's indoor playground and getting to like entertain and, and play with all the little kids and, you know. One of the other great things about the hop event coming up is that they'll also get a lot of great ice cream if they choose. You know, it's, you have yes, to they will. You have yes, to so come hungry and be prepared to purchase and, some ice cream. You're in for a treat. And I don't know if they still have the jitterbug there, but it was coffee and ice cream. And I really liked that. Um, uh, that, that used to be my go-to um, when I'd and go to the hop. Bobby, in the remaining time, talk about um, one other thing, too, that I saw, I had the pleasure of seeing. And that was the, the idea that you wrote a one-person show and actually got produced and presented at Magnetic. And talk about the status of that. So you did it, went on a couple of times. Are you going to be doing that again? Um, so, yeah, it wasn't a one-person show, uh, but it's oh. my autobiographical show. Right. Yeah. Um, and It was about uh, you, though. Say again? It was about you, though. It was about me. Um, oh. Gosh, for somebody who doesn't like to focus <laughs> on myself, everything just seems to be about me. Um, so, yeah, it was called Death by Sparkle or What Happens When You Drink Window Cleaner. Um, and it was titled that because when I was 13 and first went into the children's home, um, I tried to end my life by drinking a bottle of window cleaner that was called Sparkle. Um, so, uh, spoiler, I did not die. <laughs> um, uh, I did get very sick. Um, but yeah, so the, uh, actually the, the magnetic theater started a new playwright playwriting program um, and I was the first person that they came to and said hey we're starting this program Katie Jones came to me and said that um, and I know that you've always wanted to write your autobiographical play um, let's do that and so um, yeah so Katie was my dramaturg for it and um, director and uh, and so she helped me write my first play. I'd written sketches and, and monologues and stuff like that before, but this was my first play. Um, and, uh, and it was amazing. And we almost sold out, maybe sold out for the actual performance, but then there were a lot of people that couldn't come that night. It was a, um, a stage, it was a rehearsed staged reading. Um, and, uh, and so a lot of people couldn't come that night. So they came to our final dress rehearsal. So we actually did it twice right. because we had a huge crowd for the final dress rehearsal as well. Um, and Tippin played a younger version of me, played 13 year old me, and then uh, a little bit older me and, um, Jeremy Carter, uh, and, um, Kelly Christensen, Shannon Felt played my parents um darren marshall played jerry dellinger my my mentor from uh um from college and and beyond um and yeah it was uh it was just um it was really incredible um i i i was thinking people were going to show up and want to watch it just to because they were like, oh, she's weird. Let's see what makes her weird. <laughs> but my goal with, with it wasn't for it to be about me. It was about talking about child abuse and sexual assault and, and intimate partner violence and, and all of those things that people don't want to talk about and trying to like shed light on that by using my stories. Um, and it turns out that's what people got out of it. Like afterwards, they came up and said they saw themselves or they felt seen. Um, and so that was really cool. Um, I did hold back on some stuff in the in the play because that's what you do as a writer often when you're writing your your own story is you you're like I don't want to hurt this person's feelings and you know so on and so forth. I'm not ready to talk about this. Um, and Katie uh, Katie Jones did you know talked to me about it at the time and said, I think we should do this. And I was like, yeah, I just don't know. And um, so we're doing some revamps uh, and that um, 
it was originally going to be revamped a little bit and then um, go up in September of 2020. Um, spoiler again, it did not happen because of the pandemic. Um, uh, but it is still a plan to have it done through Magnetic since they are the reason that it was birthed into this world. Um, and, you know, uh, that was six months of labor. <laughs> well, again, I had the pleasure of seeing that also. I think I've seen a lot of stuff you've been involved in, and I certainly oh, hope it gets... I think you're entitled to compensation at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you, maybe as a final question, if people want to track you down, in other words, in terms of upcycling, whether they want to see these two upcoming shows, whether they want to find about the, the one play that you wrote, what's the best way to keep tabs on Bobby Angel? I mean, the best way for me is through Patreon, um, which is patreon.com uh, slash Barbie Angel with two L's, because um, you can do a monthly donation of anywhere from $5 to whatever you want to do, and it will help keep me in my house and eating if I ever do, uh, keep me in coffee. Um, uh, but I also put stuff on there that doesn't go anywhere else on social media because um, I can curate who's seeing that. Um, and then I'm on Instagram and Facebook uh, as Barbie Angel. Um, and I have a website uh, which has not been used much, but it is barbieangel.com. Um, however, tickets for the Lazoom show will be sold through barbieangel.com. Um, they're going to be by they're going to be donation based and they'll be through my website. The hop ice cream show is free. Um, so and do me a favor too on the um, Lazoom show, I'll put a blurb on that entertainment page I maintain so you know other people can see oh, it yes. there as well. Yes. And I'll uh, that'll, oh, remind, that'll remind me to see it on uh, March 27th. I got foggy. Yeah, I just noticed. <laughs> wow, there you go. Okay. Anyway, I, yeah. I'd, like, I'd like thank you, Bobby Angel, for being my guest. I think yes. you're, you're getting up there in terms of record guest shows. I think this is the 18th and 19th show you've been on. Like the, the Steve Martin of, of your show, right? Yeah, it hasn't, hasn't been quite 18 and 19, but always a pleasure oh. um, to have you on my show, Bobby. I look yes. forward to seeing you on, um, I have the, the two dates down, but definitely at the Zoom show on the yes. 27th. Oh, and that's called March. Barbie Angel Uncensored, by I the way. I love it. Great title. I say the title. <laughs> so I look, I look forward to seeing it at that show, Bobby, and around town and about all the great stuff you do. I'd like to also thank my producer, Cappy Tassetti. I want to sign off now with you, Bobby, but stay with me right after we sign off so we can wrap up. Thanks. Okay, great.